Hi there, the May season is fast approaching an end, so we'll take a look at the weather prospects across the UK for the next few weeks in just a couple of moments or so. But first off, a look a little bit further afield at Spain, where we've seen a lot of flooding over the last seven days or so. These were scenes in southern Spain from uh, Storm Chaser on Twitter, and you can see just how much rain is falling from these showers and thunderstorms. And we've had many days of showers and thunderstorms affecting that same part, the southeast corner of Spain, during the course of the last week or so. Now, it's not unusual to get showers and thunderstorms, especially intense ones at this time of the year. In fact, it happens often enough that it's given the nickname Gotta Fria, which translates to cold drop. And it's related to the upper pattern and what's going on there that tends to happen quite often at this time of the year. But this amount of rain is quite unusual and rather extreme. And it's estimated about 300,000 hectares of agricultural land have been lost because of the flooding. And while things have dried up here recently, uh, the uh, clearing up process will continue for quite some time. So what's going on? Well, this is the jet stream that we saw a week ago, last Tuesday. You can see this trough here sitting across parts of France affecting the UK last Monday. This did give us some unsettled weather. And as we went through the course of last week, that trough continued to dig south into Iberia, but far enough south that it started to become cut off, forming a cut off low, as we call it, and detached away from the main jet stream, which remains up across the over the top of the UK, for example. And when you get a cut off low here, it tends to sit here for some time. There's nothing to move it on. And so it continues to bring unsettled weather. It's characterized by cold air in the upper atmosphere and that drives showers when you combine it with very warm seas at this time of the year. So our, over the last six, seven days or so, we've seen frequent showers and thunderstorms brewing over the Western Med and they have been piling their way in to the southeastern side of Spain for several days, giving the flooding rains that we've seen. It did eventually weaken through last weekend and eventually moved off towards the northwest. So things are improving here uh, weather-wise. But in terms of amounts of rain, for one station alone in southeastern Spain, here we saw 10 uh, minutes, 32 millimetres of rain, and in one hour, nearly 150 millimetres of rain. And on, on that same day, last Friday the 13th, 24-hour rainfall accumulations of 321 millimetres. The average for the whole year, 297. So we saw more than a year's worth of rain in this particular location in just one day and some other parts of, of uh, this part of Spain have seen uh, nearly 400 millimetres of rain in a whole week. So an extreme event with a lot of rain here. And as I say, the impacts will be felt for quite some time. Now closer to home, it's almost the opposite really. With high pressure dominating, things are very quiet and settled, a lot of dry weather. In fact, we continue to have a rainfall deficit across parts of east and southeast England. And not a great deal changing over the next few days. A weather front will give a little bit of patchy rain to northern Scotland on Wednesday, but for many, the dry weather continues really for much of this week. The high pressure slowly meandering off to the east. So it means it's settled. There'll be a lot of sunshine by day. There'll be some mist and fog patches at night, some chilly nights at first with maybe a little bit of frost, but not too widespread. Later in the week, more isobars, more of a breeze, and it's coming up from the south as that high pressure shifts off to the east. So we're going to be drawing in warmer air from the nearby continent. And by the weekend, temperatures will be in the mid 20s for some parts of the UK as well. Now later on in the weekend, as that high pressure continues to pull away, low pressure starts then to come in from the west and that starts to bring the risk of some showery rain pushing up from the south, maybe even some thundery bursts of rain in there too. Bit of uncertainty about how quickly this will push eastwards. Uh, so the heat may hang on to eastern parts of England on Sunday, for example, but for many other places by Sunday, we're looking at the risk of some showers or maybe even a longer spell of rain, particularly uh, further west. In terms of getting some spraying done well with high pressure dominating, conditions will be pretty good for the next few days. So the green shading here covering the UK, indicating ideal conditions for spraying. Light winds, of course, and it's dry. But towards the weekend, a bit more breeze. So the green starts shrinking a little bit. And then later in the weekend, with that rain trying to come in from the west, then the spraying opportunities will gradually start to reduce as we head further on into the beginning of the new working week as well. Beyond the weekend, there's a bit of uncertainty about exactly how things will play out, but the overall pattern is fairly clear. So here we have the mean sea level pressure for Lincoln, and you can see the pressure building this week, quite a good signal for that, and then quite a good signal for a drop in pressure by the end of the weekend, just indicating that low pressure coming in with some rain or showers. Now, as we go into next week, there's quite a bit of spread in our ensembles here. Each line, of course, is a different computer model. The red line indicating the average of all of these gray lines. But you can see there is a trend here for pressure to rise again during the first part of next week and then another trough. And so we're left with this sort of trough and ridge pattern 
right the way through the next two weeks or so after we get past this coming weekend. So it's likely we'll have some days with some rain pushing in from the northwest at times and then ridges building in in between each weather system to give us a couple of dry days before the next area of low pressure comes in uh, to give us some rain. And there may also be some tropical troublemakers in there uh, as we go through next week as well. The remnants of old hurricanes may start to play into the forecast through next week too. In terms of rainfall, there will be a clear northwest southeast split. We've seen this many times over recent weeks through August and early September, and that will continue to be the case. So as an example, here is Oban, again, using all those different computer models, uh, grouping them into distinct bands here of how much rain you may get for the next uh, 10 days or so. You can see a little bit of rain on Wednesday from that weather front we talked about earlier, but actually a couple of dry days showing up here. But then actually by the end of the weekend and on into next week, rainfall chances come back up. And actually some of these are showing some fairly large totals, potentially low risk of that happening, but the risk is there nonetheless. Quite a large spread, but a clear signal for rain on almost any day from the end of the weekend on into next week across Western Scotland. In the southeast, notice it's dry really until the end of the weekend. Then there is an increase in rain chances by Sunday and through into the new working week. But actually most of the rain totals are much closer to these smaller amounts. So two to five millimeters, perhaps locally 10 millimeters if you're very lucky, but there are still quite a few members coming up here with a 20, 25% chance of it actually staying pretty much dry on some of these days as well. So even though the pattern is more changeable, a little bit more unsettled, Rainfall amounts are going to be very small, I think, across the southeast much of the time, and there'll still be quite a bit of dry weather in between, with most of the rain focused the further northwest you go across the UK. So looking at that week in a little bit more detail over Europe, uh, the blue here indicating where pressure is lower than average, and you can see with a succession of low pressure systems crossing close to the UK, there could even be some windy weather at times in the north but also areas of rain and showers pushing in, but also some ridges too. And the Azores ridge will try to extend a bit more across Spain and Portugal. So things drying up here at long last as well. In terms of temperature, well, it's a mild southwesterly flow. So we continue to see above average temperatures, quite warm actually across a good chunk of Europe as well. And in terms of rainfall with low pressure nearby, near or even above average rainfall across a good chunk of central and northwestern Europe, drier than average across much of Iberia. It's still quite dry actually across the southeast of Europe into Turkey as well. Into the following week, not a great deal of change in the overall pattern, still fairly changeable, low pressure generally to the north of the UK, higher pressure off towards the south, still a westerly flow off the Atlantic. So generally speaking, temperatures near or slightly above average, although still the potential for some chilly nights if we do get some ridges in between those areas of low pressure. And in terms of rainfall, it's sort of near or even slightly above average, the further northwest you go, the further south you come across Europe, particularly across Iberia, and it's much drier than normal. And then there are signs at this stage, it's only tentative signs, uh, that towards the early to mid part of October, we may start to see things becoming a bit more blocked again as they are now. So higher than normal pressure showing up here to the north of the UK and across Scandinavia doesn't necessarily mean high pressure itself, but it might mean low pressure becomes less frequent or a lot weaker overall. So things become a bit more slower moving and some longer, drier spells of weather may develop in between by the time we get through to the middle part of October. Still though, at this stage, much of Europe covered in red here, so near or above average temperatures are likely. And in terms of rainfall, well, it's a bit mixed depending on where you are in Europe, generally above average rainfall towards the east and mainly near or slightly below average rainfall across northern and western parts of Europe during this particular a week long period. So to summarize that just for the UK, for the next few days, for this week, it's looking mostly dry, uh, increasingly warm by the weekend with temperatures climbing into the mid twenties for some of us, uh, but some chilly nights and there will be a little bit of mist and fog around, maybe some patchy rural grass frost as well, particularly early on in the week before things warm up towards the weekend. And then through the weekend, it will gradually start to turn more unsettled, but a bit of uncertainty about how quickly that process will push from west to east, but it's likely to be changeable then for the next two weeks after that. And then towards the early to middle part of October, possibly becoming a little bit more settled, a bit drier, uh, maybe a touch warmer too. But that ongoing risk of some chilly nights at this time of the year. That's it from us for now. We'll be back next week with another farming forecast.